Let's say I wanted to find out how many students just really, really like Justin Bieber. And I take a random sample of 125 students and let's see, 53 of them really, really like Justin Bieber. And I want to find out, um, I want to estimate the true population proportion of students who really, really, really like Justin Bieber. So I'm going to use my uh, 53 out of 125 and I'm going to check that out. So here's what I'm going to do on the calculator. I'm going to go to Menu, Statistics, Confidence Intervals. So I'm going to use this, comp and I, I have, I'm going to do a one proportion Z interval because I'm, I'm looking at how many like Justin Bieber, um, 53 out of 125. So it's going to end up being a proportion. So the number that like Justin Bieber is considered my successes here, and then this is 125, and I'm going to do a comp of 95% confidence interval. So here I have my results, upper and lower confidence levels. So I'm going to say I am 95% confident that uh, the interval from 33.7% to 51.1% about captures the true population proportion of students who really, really like Justin Bieber. Notice it calculates my p hat for me. That would be the center of the interval, 42.4%. Um, that would be 53 divided by 100. And it gives me the margin of error, which is calculated by taking the z-critical value times the standard error of the proportion. And so I don't have either of those separately, but I have them multiplied together to give me a margin of error. So 0.424 plus or minus the 0.0866 gives me my lower and upper bounds of my confidence interval. Now let's say I wasn't given 53 out of 125. I was just said, I was just given, I have um, 125 students and about 42% of them really, really like Justin Bieber. Well, when I do the confidence interval on the calculator though, I have to enter it as number of successes. So what I'd have to do is say 0.42 times 125 and get the number of successes. Well, this says 52.5. The calculator must have a whole number for a number of successes. So I'm just going to round that up to 53. So sometimes you're given a, a, a percentage, a, a sample proportion that when you multiply it times the populate or times the sample size, doesn't give you an exact number of successes, so you have to just round to the nearest number of successes. So if I, if I put that in, then I would still put that in as 53 over 125 like I did before. So sometimes you have to do that piece first. Now let's take a look at a mean. I have some data here uh, that came from the healing rate of newts, which is a type of a lizard, that have skin wounds. Okay, so I have 18 newts, and they, they collected some data on the healing rate of the skin wounds. And so these numbers represent healing rates. And I want to find out, I want to estimate the true population healing rate for newts. Um, sounds like an, a really exciting thing to find out, so I really want to know this. So I'm going to go to menu, and, no, sorry, I want to, sorry, I want to get out of this escape, escape. I want to go to my uh, calculator page. I could do a confidence interval on the within the spreadsheet, but I really, I think it displays more nicely on the calculator page, so that's just my, my choice. So going to the calculator page, I'm going to go to Menu, Statistics, and Stat, or Confidence Interval, sorry. Now, because I don't know the sample, or don't know the population standard deviation, sigma, I have to use the T model. So I'm going to use a T interval, um, and I have data. So I can input data or stats, but in this case I have a list of data. So I'm going to use this data method, and my list is called healing rate, and I have a confidence interval of 90, 95%, so here we go with, here's my confidence interval. So it says, I'm 95% confident that between, uh, that the true population mean healing rate for these newts with skin wounds for newts with skin wounds is between 21.5 and 29.8. And I'm not sure what the units on that is. You'd have to look at the actual problem. It comes from uh, page 522 or 3.2.4 in the ebook. Um, notice that it went ahead and calculated the X bar for me, the degree of freedom, the standard deviation of the, the sample. So this is the mean and standard deviation of that sample that was in my list. And I have my sample size here. Uh, so all the stuff I need to make my interval, 
I can do x bar plus or minus the t critical value, so I can figure out what my critical value with this degree of freedom is. I have to do that separately, it's not in here, um, times 8.32 divided by the square root of n, square root of 18. So I could, I could actually do that by hand with the formula and double check that I get the correct upper and lower bounds. Now, um, I also might be given not the the actual list of data, but only the statistics. So maybe I was only given that x bar is 25.667 and that the s of x is 8.32. So I was I would just be entering the x bar and the, the mean and the standard deviation from the sample, but I don't have actually have the sample data. So how would that look? So I'm going to go to Menu, Statistics, and uh, go to Confidence Intervals, my t interval, and I am going to choose now Entering Stats. So, okay, so my uh, mean for this, this problem was 25, so let's say I was given 25.67, okay, and my standard deviation was 8.32, and my n is 18, okay, and there we go. Now, this is going to be slightly different because I rounded these numbers a little bit, but it's basically the same confidence interval, okay, so this, instead of giving the data, I'm giving the, given the stats, and it's going to do the co computation with the stats. One more thing you probably will need to do, since I have a small sample size of 18, that's less than 30, um, I also have no information about whether this, the population of skin wounds on newts is distributed according to a normal model, so I'm going to have to test that it is okay to use um, this T model for my confidence intervals. So I need to make a graph. So I'm going to go to a data and statistics page and show you some different graphs that I could check to see if my normal condition is met. Now you might think, why am I doing a normal condition to use a T model? Well, T model has basically the same shape as a normal model, it's just a little wider in the tails, but, it, but I'm looking to see if the, the distribution of my sample could have come from a unimodal and symmetric population. Okay, so I'm going to go to my healing rate. Okay, so I see a dot plot. Notice my dot plot kind of goes up in the middle and down at the edges. There's no extreme outliers. There's no extreme skew. If I wanted to make a histogram, I'm going to go over to Menu, Plot Type, Make a Histogram. Just to show you, now this probably has more, more bars than I'd really like. Just a quick way to adjust the, the bin width here. If you go hover over your bar until you have um, this little sideways arrow up here, and then hold down your click pad until a hand appears, then you can drag the bars until the histogram kind of, they join together and make just a little bit nicer histogram. Then you have to push um, escape, I think, to let go of the, the hand. Now, Notice some of the bars are too high now, so if I go to Menu and go to Zoom, Zoom Data, it will automatically size this down. So now I can see this histogram, and it's still, once again, I don't see any extreme outliers. It still has, I don't see any, any noticeable skew to this. So it's not perfectly unimodal and symmetric, and no sample will ever be that, but it's good enough. So I can, now, one more plot that you have not seen is called a normal probability plot. Well, actually, you may have seen it. I can't remember if we've seen it this, but if you haven't, plot type. So if I go to normal probability plot, what we have here is we have the data down here, the healing rate, and on, on the side we have the expected z-score. So if we were to take use the healing rate and the mean and standard deviation of this particular distribution of data and create z-scores for every one of these pieces of data, and plot the healing rate, uh, plot the actual data value against its z-score, we should see that if the data comes from a fairly unimodal and symmetric uh, population, that it would, or actually if the data itself is fairly unimodal and symmetric, that it would lie fairly close to a straight line. So as long as this line is fairly straight, that indicates that there is no skew in the data that is fairly unimodal and symmetric. So once again, this, this normal probability plot would be um, something that you could show. Now, remember, whatever plot I use, whether it's the dot plot, the histogram, or the normal probability plot, I need to sketch it 
I don't have to put all these labels on, but I should just make a general like x-axis and a y-axis, x-axis, a y-axis, draw the line, and kind of put the dot sort of where they are, or make an x-axis and a y-axis and draw the bars of the histogram or put the dot plot on, and then tell, and then tell okay, there is no obvious skew or outliers in the data after looking at the histogram, or the normal probability plot is fairly linear. Therefore, I am, I am met the conditions to use the T model. Of course, you check the random and the 10% condition too, but you do have to draw it and check it. Okay, I think that pretty much uh, covers how to use the calculator to do um, intervals for either one population proportion or one sample, or one, I'm sorry, one sample proportion or one sample mean to estimate a population proportion or a popul population mean.